Welcome to the Signals Music Theory Testing Laboratory. Today's experiment involves musical portal technology, utilizing the diminished seventh chord to travel to eight different keys. In order to further your understanding of this topic, I've uploaded today's instructions into a holographic virtual guitar teacher. Engaging lesson protocol in three, two, one. Hey, I'm Jake Lizio, and in this video what I want to do is explore some of the more interesting properties of the diminished seventh chord and start writing with those properties. Mainly what we're going to do is explore the idea of these chords being symmetrical, the fact that any note can be the root of a diminished seventh chord. Also the fact that these chords will resolve to either a major chord or a minor chord, and what that means is that when you play a diminished seventh chord, there's eight possibilities of keys or chords that you can go to. So to me, the diminished seventh chord is like a portal to eight different universes if you can just treat it in this ambiguous weird way. So the first half of this video will be heavy on the theory. If you're already familiar with diminished sevenths, then I suggest you just skip to the second half of the video where I'll be putting this all to use and actually trying to write music with some of these properties. So let's get started and talk about the diminished seventh chord. They're built just by adding on notes that are three frets away or three half steps away. So if I'm starting on the note C, for example, and if I go three frets over, it takes me to the note E flat. And if I go another three half steps over, it takes me to the note G flat. Another three half steps takes me to the note A. Technically, it should be called a B double flat. We're not gonna really call it that in this video. I wanna keep things very simple. We've got these four notes, C, E flat, G flat, and A. Those four notes are the four notes of a C diminished full diminished chord. C full diminished or C diminished seventh. Ugly sounding chord, right? But here's the deal. If I want to figure out the notes, let's go to the note E flat, for example. If I want to figure out the notes of an E flat full diminished, it's the same four notes. I have an E flat, I have a G flat, I have an A, and I have a C. So if these two chords have the exact same set of notes, they're the same chord. They're just inversions of each other. C diminished is the same thing as E flat full diminished, is the same thing as G flat full diminished, is the same thing as A full diminished. Those are the exact same chord. I just played the same chord four different ways by sliding it up, right? So really the point here is when you hear a C full diminished, I don't want you to think of it only being a C full diminished. I want you to think, you know, that could be an E flat diminished, it could be a G flat diminished, it could be an A diminished, depending on the way we're treating it. Normally, whatever the bass note is of the chord, that actually gets the name. So technically we should call this a C diminished and we shouldn't call it a G flat diminished. But I want you to be open-minded and think about how these things work in different contexts. Now the diminished chord is pretty useless all on its own. And listen to that, that's really just garbage all on its own. It needs to go somewhere. The diminished seventh chord is a portal and a portal that doesn't go anywhere isn't very useful. Uh, it's the destination that matters, right? So this C diminished can take me to a few different places and that's where the real magic happens. How can can it take me somewhere though? Well, I want you to think about how the diminished chord has fit in to our major scale, right? We have the Roman numerals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that seven chord is supposed to be a diminished triad. The reason you're not supposed to make it a full diminished chord is because if you make it that seven chord a full diminished chord, you'll be adding in a note that's outside of the scale. You'll be adding in a flat six. But if we do that, a flat six will resolve down to the perfect fifth very well in that context. So what we're doing is we're breaking the rules. Even though the seven chord is supposed to be a diminished triad, we're gonna take the seventh chord and we're gonna make it a full diminished chord. So in this context here, C diminished is the seven chord of D flat major, right? And that should resolve nice and fine. You can hear it does. Same thing in minor. If I look at my minor scale, you'll see that the one chord is minor and the two chord is diminished. So if I look at the C diminished and I ask myself, C diminished is the two chord of what? C is the second note of what minor scale? And the answer is B flat. If I play a B flat minor scale, the second note is C. So a C diminished will resolve to B flat minor very, very well. So even without worrying about voice leading and where things are going up and down, I can find a method of resolution just by taking my diminished chord, going up a half step, and making it a major chord. Or I take my diminished chord and move it down a whole step and make it a minor chord. Two ways to resolve the same diminished. So let's do that in a different key just so you see how easy this is. Let me play a D diminished, right? Here's a D full diminished. If I want to resolve this horrible chord, I could just go up a half step to a major chord. So what's a half step after D? That's E flat. 
right? You hear that? Or I could have gone down a whole step to a minor chord. What's down a whole step from D? That would be C, so C minor. D diminished to C minor. And once again, since any one of the notes of this chord could have been the root, I can perform this operation of resolving up or down. I can perform that operation off of the D. I can perform that operation off of uh, F. Any one of the notes of my chord, I can do the same thing off of it. And that's how I'm able to modulate to eight different chords or eight different tonalities off of the exact same chord. In the song that I wrote here, this same chord has eight different functions. It functions as the seven chord of four different major tonalities, and it functions as the two chord of four different minor tonalities. So here's how I put the whole thing together. I started off with the diminished chord, which I used C diminished in every single case here. And right after that C diminished, my first tonality came in as an E minor. And the reason that works is because I was treating my C diminished as a G flat diminished. And G flat is the second note, or F sharp is the second note of E minor. So I figured, hey, if this C diminished, we'll treat it like an F sharp diminished, it can resolve to E minor. So my very first section has three measures of the E minor tonality, the chord, and I also used the E minor scale. Here was the problem I ran into though. If I just go back to my diminished chord and then launch you directly into a new key, then it's like a surprise every single time. It's like a magic trick. You never get used to what that diminished chord sounds like. So I found it was really important to give you a little bit of that diminished chord in the context of our current key. But then the second time that I give you that diminished chord, it's to launch you and portal you into a whole new tonality. So the way I structured this, I've got three measures of my new tonality, one measure of my C diminished, three measures of my tonality, one measure of my C diminished, and that'll take us, boom, right into our new tonality. And in this case, what I did, I believe I moved up uh, a minor third to get into a G minor tonality, and I used the G blues scale. And really, on top of every one of these chords, you know, after that, uh, you know, I think it went to a B flat major, and I'm just looking at B flat thinking, what kind of scales have the notes of the B flat chord in it? And there's a lot of options there. So I, you know, I went through scales like B flat Lydian, I ended up using some harmonic major instead, and all always kind of highlighting that diminished chord once it came around. That one little measure of diminished, I thought it would be really important to maybe play that diminished arpeggio or maybe play some of the half whole scale, which fits right in with that diminished seventh chord, but really prominently highlight the fact that diminished chord keeps coming back and keeps taking us into new territory. Now, there was a lot that I wrote here. I'm not going to go through every lick, but there was one lick I just want to comment on because I thought it was really fun. Um, it was over the uh, D flat major section. I decided to go into the D flat major key. I think it's the only time I just use regular major. So what I had is I had these fi a five note pattern, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, into a four note pattern, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then a three note pattern, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and a two note pattern, one, two, one, two, one, two, and I ended it with a nice little bend. So it's five times three, and then four times three, and then three times three, and then two times three, and then you finally get that bend to close thing off. I thought it was kind of cool. So here's what the whole thing sounds like, going through eight different tonalities in a minute and a half, using the exact same chord with eight different functions. difficult for me to put that all together and have it sound listenable. You know, I think that might be too many different key changes for just a minute and a half. So I tried to pace things out and you might see in the very, very middle, I added a little bit of extra diminished because I thought it was getting really monotonous to just keep changing keys like that. I figured a little bit of uh, anxiety in the middle there, a little extra diminished might help kind of break things up a little bit. And at the end, of course, I just decided to make things nice and happy by resolving on a major chord, the same major chord that we started off into. So to me, this is really exciting.
interesting and like engaging and fun stuff. It was extremely difficult. Uh, this is only a minute and a half of music, and I spent probably 10 hours together writing it, recording it, tracking it, plotting it out. You know, it's not every day you need an Excel spreadsheet just to write a piece of music. And I really quickly want to talk about that process. It, music isn't always supposed to be written like this. You're not always supposed to, you know, decide ahead of time what you're going to write. But sometimes this is a really beneficial process. And I learned and grew as a musician just by engaging in this. And I know I would have never written this unless I had decided, hey, I'm going to do this academic process of experimenting with this one chord and making myself resolve it to all eight different possibilities. You know, I've gained a lot from that process, and I wouldn't have ever done it unless I just decided to. So, you know, I don't recommend you, this is how you write your music with, with this kind of mechanical approach, but I do recommend you sometimes write music like this because I found it's very helpful, and it's a lot of fun. It's a really good project and puts you into some unfamiliar territory. So I hope you liked this video, and I hope it got you thinking about things in a little different way and thinking about the ambiguity of your diminished seventh chord. If you really like this video, you can consider supporting my Patreon page. The fine folks over there are sponsoring these lessons, and they really wouldn't be possible without them. So thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you can't do that, though, that's just fine. Think about liking, subscribing, commenting. All that kind of stuff helps me out. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.